On the other hand, I am at volume 9 of the light novel now. I finished chapter 1 yesterday and hopefully I'll be able to finish it next week. But I have a bit of a rant, especially after reading volume 6 to 8. So, after reading uh, the light novel again, and I know that previously I said in the, uh, in the anime reaction that I have submitted to Jord being the male lead, unfortunately, and somewhere within me still think or still know that he is going to be the male lead towards the end. But goddamn, dude, the amount of fucking teasing that they do for Maria in, in the light novel is just absolutely mind blowing. And it just, ooh, it just riles my gear, man. Especially after what happened towards the end of chapter one of volume nine. Goddamn, dude, goddamn. I am, I am tired of Jord. I am tired of Keith. I don't want these two boys to go after Katarina, or at least they can go after Katarina, but I want them to fail. <laughs> That's exactly what I want. If Jor doesn't get Katarina towards the end, I don't want Keith to get her either, because these two characters, whatever. And I, especially with the introduction of more characters, besides Maria, you know, my preference is always going to be Maria first. But if Maria ends up not getting Katarina, because no fucking Yuri, only Yuri bait, I much prefer every other boy that we've been introduced to besides Jordan Keith, especially in volume eight when you get introduced to Caesar. That guy is fucking great, all right? We only know him for like one volume, but he, he's, a, he's a fucking great guy. Sora is acceptable as well. I feel like Caesar is just a more extreme version of Sora. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like the whole traveling shit because Caesar's a merchant so he's traveled across the country while Sora is just kind of the poor boy who goes around uh, who goes around the place trying to get money and stuff well I mean Caesar does the same thing but he's a mercenary compared to Sora but anyways I really like Katarina and Caesar's chemistry especially with the way that they met and they both lied to each other about being servants <laughs> and then later on they end up meeting each other at when they're dressed as royalty or dressed as nobles well him royalty hers a noble so they're, so, so they're just both like what the fuck <laughs> but they still ended up meeting each other for their last day and I thought that was uh I, I thought that was really nice for for the both of them and again that was when I'd finally admitted that yes I am tired of Jord this boy needs to go and if I, i'll be honest if he does need <laughs> i don't really think that he's going to end up being shafted to the side consider that he is still going very strong in the whole flirting situation and uh, again everybody is still trying to stop him but if he does end up failing towards the end i i really he would actually be good as a villain material. We don't have a big central villain yet, or an antagonist anyways. We do have a current antagonist, Sarah, who we met back in like volume four, when she was uh, she was helping uh, Keith's brother kidnap Keith. And we saw her a little bit back in volume eight, and now it looks like we're going to see her again in volume nine. So we, we do have that kind of antagonist and the whole like dark magic itself seems like to be the antagonist. The other thing that I wanted to rant about is the constant teasing of Maria, dude. It just, ooh, ooh, riles up my gears because Katarina, in her perspective, always talk about how Maria is such a perfect gal and that she would want to marry her, but only if Katarina was a boy like if only I was a boy I would have married her if only I was a boy I would have fought off all the other suitors Ooh, ooh, how I can't come on Katarina come on and then there'll be parts where Katarina says Maria but in parentheses it'll say my waifu Maria <laughs> And like, why? why? Why do you gotta do this to me, man? Why do you gotta fucking tease me on this? And what, what really, what really got me snapping was towards the end of chapter one of volume nine, when we were in Sora's perspective, and he had said, despite there being Jord and Keith and all the other boys going after Katarina, I feel like Maria is the strongest candidate of all. And, 
And now we are like, great, now even Sora is saying this shit. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> don't, don't you get me started, Sora. Don't you get me freaking started. <laughs> now that I think about it with the whole dark magic thing and Jord learning about his emotions, his newfound emotions anyways, I feel like that would make him a bit susceptible to to dark magic, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. Uh, with the whole Jord being a villain and all, I actually would be fine with that. I I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and especially it would be a little bit more reasonable if it was dark magic that was uh that, that was consuming him. That would be nice, but I'll have to see where volume 9 goes. Speaking of Maria, I need Maria to step up her game. <laughs> Katarina's been talking about how she would marry Maria this whole time. I need Maria to step up her motherfucking game. Let's fucking go, dude. And especially with the fact that Katarina's working in the ministry now, so she's spending a lot of time with Maria and Sora, and like, I am totally fine with that, you know? Sora is a great guy, I really like Sora, and spending more time with Maria is always an A plus for me. <laughs> and I do have to say though, poor Raphael, dude, poor Raphael, ever since he lost his dark magic and he joined the ministry, he's been shafted to the side. <laughs> We don't even see him anymore. That poor fellow, dude. <laughs> He's just not fucking useful, especially for this whole dark magic uh, mumbo jumbo. Anyways, that's going to be about it for me. 